Hi, I'm Andy from Midi. You join me today at the beautiful Old Huff Fisheries on the Big Max Lake, where I'm going to show you some of my secrets to catching silvers on commercials. So you join us today on Big Max, one of my favourite lakes um, at the Old Huff Fisheries. But this year, I've been doing something a bit different. I've, I've, I've wanted bites, so I've targeted silvers. Um, places like the Old Huff and uh, Bundles, where I've been going and I've been doing quite well. And there's a few tweaks and, and just, just rig changes and feeding changes that I'm gonna show you in a minute that I think help, helps you catch more fish. Generally, I'll, I'll try and target two areas of my peg, um, but maybe a couple of lines on, on different areas in the same depth. So I'll have a, a, a short line where I'll feed maggots and just try and just get bites all day as quick as I can and I'll have uh, two longer lines where I'm gonna be targeting the bigger fish, the skimmers and the bream, hopefully, if they show up. Um, and I'll, I'll feed these different. I'll have, I'll have one to the left of my peg, one to the right of my peg, and I'll feed them slightly different. One, one I'll feed heavy, one not so much, and we'll gauge the interest from there. I'll start short. I'll, well, I'll feed me long lines. I'll start short, and I'll just try and catch as many roach as I can before I go and have a look on the longer lines. Um, I aim to get to about 50 ropes for five pound and then I'll go and have a look long. The two venues I've, I've really been going to to target silvers is, is here at the Old Huff on the Big Max where Mel's been running silvers matches on a Tuesday. And I've been going to Bundles at Warrington um, where the silvers matches on a Thursday and a Sunday. But I have found the two venues totally different. Um, the rigs for the Old Huff, I've been using a, a heavier rig on my short line only really catching silvers in that bottom third. But bundles, I've, I've been using a lighter rig in deeper water because I've been catching loads of fish through the water. Um, and, and the heavier rigs haven't really come into play there. Generally, um, at the Old off, the, the, the roach are, I'm gonna say two to six ounces, generally. Um, you've got skimmers from three ounce to, well, we've had some five pounds today. But bundles, your fish are um, more of an average of maybe four to eight ounce skimmers and roach, and they're the same size. So here, where I'm gonna be targeting all roach on the short line, but bigger fish on the longer lines, at bundles, you'd be targeting everything on the same line. Um, so the feeding's a bit different, um, where I'll fish maggot short here, um, and plenty of them. At bundles, I'll try and just cup ground baiting um, with maybe some casters just to catch all them different fish um, at all different depths through the water. So the, the different venues you go to, you, you need to know really the, the stamp of fish you're targeting and what they're eating really. Um, bundles tends to be, a, for me, it's been a caster venue. I don't know about other people, but here at the Old Duff, it's more maggots. Um, so just there's plenty of information online if you have a look and just try and find out what baits you need to take to these venues. The, the ground baits you use at different venues matter as well. Um, here on Big Macs, it's heavily fished with pellets. There's a lot of big carp, big F1s, and there's pellets raining in all day. So you need a fish meal ground bait to target them skimmers here. But bundles, I've found that fish meal makes a right mess in your peg and you just have them fizzing everywhere. So at bundles, I use a natural mix, a roach mix. Um, Again, uh, on some maggots, like today, I've put, uh, generally I'll put three to four pints in on that short line. You know, there's a lot of fish. You're fishing for 180 fish usually. Um, whereas at bundles, you're fishing for the same amount of fish, but they're a lot bigger uh, and it's a six hour match. So you don't have to put as much in. I, I generally only do about four pints of ground bait. Um, I, think it's, I think it's enough for anywhere you go really. You don't need any more. Um, and what I do do different is I'll put 100 mil micros in um, and it's not too many micros to have F1s in your peg but it's just enough to keep them bream picking um, picking them out because what I don't want to do at the old off is I don't want to put maggots on my long line I don't want to be shipping 30 metres to catch little fish I want to be catching big fish so I'll try my hardest not to feed any maggots on there even though I'm fishing maggots on the hook um, just just to try and avoid them small fish really long. I, you know, I want to catch them short and quick. Um, right, so um, I'll show you the rigs I've used today. 
and generally the rigs I'll use for this kind of fishing anywhere I go. Start with the elastic. It's a midi high vis, four to six solid. Perfect for fish from an ounce to five pound, really, as long as you take your time. Floats for today are MW F1 carbons, and the float you use makes a big difference to presentation. Um, so if, I'll, I'll talk you through it on the other rigs, but this one's, a, a, they're all through the water or on the bottom rigs. So main line is 016, and then the shotting pattern is one of these tapered bolts, which I'm sure you've all seen, all slot shot so I can move them. That's important. I won't use shot on these kind of rigs because I want to I want to move the shot throughout the day. Going down to a hook length of 010 midi low vis to an 18s 6313 hook. And what I do do is I'll put I'll start my shot off on my hook length so it keeps the hook length straight. So that's that's my maggot rig for fishing short. Then I've got my rig for fishing long for, for big fish, same elastic, uh, midi high vis, four to six. Same float, but this is a bigger one. This is a four by 14s. Same line, shotting's a bit different on this rig. And like I said before, slot shot so I can move it about. So I'll start off with your standard bulk and two droppers. But if I feel this fish in my peg and they're being cagey, and I'm, having, I'm getting indications but no bites, what I will do is I'll double bulk, I'll pull it all down to just above my up length. So there's a double bulk, and I'll fish it two or three inches over depth, and every bite you get then, the float will just lift out the water, fish on, perfect. And then the last two rigs I've got set up for today, there's some shallow rigs on me on my short kits. Again, same elastics, same line, same floats, but these are 4x10. And these have got a spread, spread short. I've got a couple of number 10s under the float, and then 10s and 11s all the way through to try and catch them fish on the drop. So going back to what I said before about the float you're using make a big, making a big difference to presentation. The 4x14 is for presenting me bait hard on the bottom. Every shot, straight down, straight to the bottom where the fish are. The 4x12's version is a bit lighter, so I, I can follow that through with my rig to catch fish on the drop. So that'll present my, rig a lot, my bait a lot slower to the fish. And then the 4x10, I'll be presenting my bait shallower um, and through the water. So that's three different kinds of presentation with three, well, the same float, but three different weights of the same float. I can, I can do anything with this float, you know, I can fish it on the bottom, I can fish it shallow, I can fish it through the water. So it's a great pattern for my silverfish fishing on commercials. I'm gonna run you through today now and how it's gone. And it's, it's been hard. Um, I've started the match how I normally do. I've put a few maggots short. I've fed some ground bait on both my long lines, three balls to my left, one to my right, and I've, I've gone short. And it's been great. I've had 20 ropes, 20 put-ins, and then my peg's been dead. Um, the, the sun's come out, it's flat calm, it's bright. And I've had to really chase fish around my peg to keep them coming. So I've carried on feeding short. I've gone and had a look on my long line, nothing. I had a look on the one where I fed three balls, and I've had a couple of small skimmers, one about a pound, and then nothing, and it's uh, and my peg's dead, I can't get a bite. So I've gone back on, I've put two more pots in on my 30 meter line, one on me on, on my line to my right, and I've come short, and I've, I've managed to tick over with small ropes. Um, it's not been as hectic as it usually is, but I've been getting bites just by laying that rigging, like I showed you with that shotting pattern, and just catching them just as it settles. Um, I've noticed some pimping on my long line, so I've gone out of luck. I've had a five pound bream, um, awesome. And then again, bites have just gone. Um, and it's been a day where I've had to feed pretty much after every fish I've had on my long line. I don't know whether they're just coming in and, and, and hoovering it all up or not, what, I don't know. 
but um, I've ended up having a couple of good bream on that line. Big potting, going in, catching one straight away. Couple of small ones, then it's dead. Feed again, repeat the process. All the while I've been feeding short and I've dropped on my short line and I've had a, a mega spell catching 40, 50 roach shallow in an hour or so before that's gone quiet again. So I've gone back on my long line, had a few more bream and, and we've, we've had a good day in the end. But you know, it just shows that you can't, you can't take it as gospel that that's how you're gonna catch fish. You've got to work it out on the day. You've got to work your feeding out. Um, it's been a really tricky one to work out today with these conditions, but I think if you, if you follow what I've done today, you should catch some fish. If you like this video and you want to see more videos from Midi, please like and subscribe and thanks for watching.